I'm Philip Ward, Editor-in-Chief of Aunt Mini Europe. One of the big sessions on day one of the Congress was about screening and how to optimise it. I'm very pleased to have with me one of the speakers here from today, Professor Christiana Kuhl from Arken. Thank you very much, Christiana, for Hello. joining us. Good. Now, in your speech, you in your lecture, you talked about the search for um, a good method, the, the best method for screening. Um, could you just elaborate on that a little, about that search for the best method for screening for breast? Um, I think the most important issue to understand is that um, in the year 2019, um, the task as a radiologist is not anymore to find all cancers, um, but actually to offer imaging methods that ensure the highest sensitivity um, for biologically aggressive cancer and a actually low sensitivity, a desirably low sensitivity for the so-called pseudo-cancers, the ones that, uh, based on histology, are cancers but don't behave as cancers clinically. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would, I would call this a sensitivity profile, um, and we need to find imaging methods that offer a profile that matches with this clinical need and ensure detection of high-grade aggressive cancers and avoid detection of disease that wouldn't change a patient's outcome. Okay. Now, you've been very enthusiastic over the past two or three years about abbreviated <laughs> MRI. This has been one of your one of your themes, one of your pursuits. Um, could you update us on that a little? Um, you talked to, this morning about a three-minute um, examination for breast MRI, which is a very exciting topic. Is that is that really one that's realistic? Yeah, that was what we published in 2014 in the JCO article on the use of abbreviated MRI. It was a three-minute scan and three seconds to read the image. Um, uh, I think that actually was meant to show how far we can push the envelope. Uh, so even based on that very quick acquisition, short protocol, um, the diagnostic accuracy with which we are able to find specifically biologically aggressive cancer was equivalent to the full um, a breast MRI protocol that we used to use before. Okay, but is it ready for clinical use, abbreviated MRI? Um, define ready for clinical use. <laughs> uh, we have uh, now evidence, I think I counted a total 18 different um, trials that have been conducted all over the world that used this idea and then uh, tried the very same thing and I as far as I know and as far as I have seen from the literature, they were all concordant in that abbreviated protocols do work. And beyond this, beyond uh, breast imaging, our own group has used this idea to also accelerate the acquisition of prostate MR imaging. And I think the idea of um, uh, value-based MRI, so to speak, has evolved from this in that um, today we should try to use MRI more upfront, not as a third line imaging method that is reserved for very few, but rather focus on a specific clinical task and use very limited pulse sequence protocols to then um, increase access to this technology. Okay. Now you're also co-principal investigator in a large um, US and European trial at the moment, looking specifically, I think, at dense press. Mm -hmm. Could you update us on the status of that, of that trial? Um, the trial was started under the uh, uh, um, lead of Christoph Comstock from the Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and Gillian Newsett and myself are co-PIs on it. Um, it involved uh, almost 2,000 women who uh, were recruited and the inclusion criteria were to have no r breast cancer specific risk factors other than dense breast tissue defined as everything uh, beyond ACR2. Um, and uh, women underwent digital breast tomosynthesis and abbreviated breast MRI. And uh, interestingly, the study um, close to accrual um, uh, much faster than anticipated, so the accrual time was half the time that we actually had anticipated to take. So it seems that women liked the idea. Um, so when is it? Yeah. Is it being going to be published quite soon? Yeah, when can we have to see published. findings? Yeah, it's, it's going to be published soon. The, yeah. the primary aim paper is done, uh, and we're going to submit this soon. And I hope that it's going to be published like within the next month or so. Okay. Now, also, you're you're not only involved in breast imaging and research, but you're involved, I think, in a very exciting interventional project. Project. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we. Uh, I'm. I'm. I like to do also oncologic interventions, and I'm very interested in doing it. And uh, the one. 
uh, idea that I find most intriguing right now is the use of uh, local interventional treatment, for instance, of liver metastases, not so much to treat the given metastasis, but to improve uh, the response of the entire body to immune um, stimulation treatment. Mm -hmm. um, because it has been shown that there's what people would call an abscopal effect. In other words, if you treat the metastases and thereby uh, um, increase the availability of tumor-associated antigens that are usually reside in the cell, in the tumor cell, um, then that can be used by the, immune, by the, by the body's immune system to stimulate mm -hmm. um, immune response against cancer. And I think that's one of the most exciting areas of the entire field of uh, interventional radiology. Okay, good. Now also you're um, one of only two um, female heads of radiology in Germany at the moment, I think in a university hospital anyway. Um, does this make you feel very proud? Do you, do you, do you, do you feel proud of that or is, is it something that, that exercises your mind very much? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Actually, sorry, actually it doesn't matter. Um, I, I do think uh, it is something that has to change though. Uh, and I think it will change if people understand that this job is the best they can ever have. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's actually um, uh, demanding. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of time and, and, and enthusiasm. Um, but I think it's the one of the best positions that you can ever have because you are free to do uh, clinical work, of course, administrative work but also research. But most importantly, you have to deal with very, I mean, with promising young people who, uh, whom you can develop and who trust you, hopefully, mm -hmm. and who, who like to work with you and whom you can uh, be very proud of. So I'm proud of the team, Excellent. actually. Well, I mean, it's a w the, one of the themes this week is Women in Focus, the large um, exhibition mm -hmm. by the U-Barn at, okay. at the church. So hopefully this will inspire others and, and, nice. and, and, and you will as well. Yeah. Um, now, do you... <laughs> there you are, <laughs> advice. Um, now, do you also have any, um, any tips for budding researchers? If, if any of our, our listeners, you're known yeah. as one of, the, one of the leading researchers in Europe. Um, is there any advice, any single tip that, that you would have for, for um, any of our listeners, any of, of our viewers who want to get into research more? Um, I think the most important uh, um, uh, suggestion would be take it easy. I mean, start easily. Just use a very simple research question where you can try to um, try to get the skills that are needed to do research, ask the right question, do the right, use the right metrics to measure whatever the effect you want to display. Um, and don't start with the big questions first. All of the big questions to be solved are of course more interesting. But if you start, just use the small project that you can really also successfully complete. And for the research, research topic to choose, which is the most important question, what is interesting type of research, ask an, uh, a colleague, ask a more senior colleague for, a, for advice, for suggestion, and then do whatever he or she uh, suggests. Excellent. Very okay. practical advice. Thank you very yeah. much for joining us, Christiana, and I hope the conference goes well for you this week. Thank this you. is Philip Ward for Art Mini Europe signing off.